Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Five Spanish red wines. What do they have in common? Nothing apart from their Spanish and their red. Virtually nothing. Well, let's just dig in. Uh, we've got five different regions and we've got quite a lot of different grape varieties. And so the first one, uh, Pasión. Uh, de Bobal. Bobal's the great variety and we are in the region of Otiola Requena. So this is about as far south as we go in these in these five. Uh, Otiola Requena is, uh, if you know where Valencia is, uh, it's part of the, the province round down there. Bobal, a grape that um, yeah, it's been there for a long time. Uh, people are starting to make a bit of a noise about it in the last ten years. Uh, let's see how we get on with this one. It's got a smell of what I call desecrated coconut. Do you know that anyone else like object to when they put coconut, those coconut flakes on top of cakes and you're left with, it's like chewing, I don't know, bits of long thin polystyrene. I don't like it. As a smell though, here, um, I don't know whether it's from the oak barrels, uh, it, uh, it's, it's, uh, did it say it's got oak barrels? Uh, a stay in French oak barrels. It's funny, it smells more on that uh, coconutty American oak. But um, yeah, it, it smells rounded, but there's also a little bit of uh, chocolate in there and a bit of cherry as well. Uh, th there's also reduction. It feels like a wine that's been made. Someone's tried not to let air get into it and uh, to preserve a little bit of freshness in there. So there's the fruit. Yes, there's the oak side, but there's also the quite a fresh, juicy, bouncy plum and, and dark berry flavour. Hmm, it's OK. I almost wish that they hadn't got that, um, muddied it with that coconutty character from the oak. Because um, uh, the, the, uh, the, fr the fruit is verging on that ever so slight jamminess. Uh, and uh, almost a little bit more of that reduction and maybe some earlier picking would have made it a little bit fresher. As it is, you're left with a quite a rounded, warm, spicy wine. Uh, I'm not sure whether it would pull halfway through the glass. Um, it feels uh, okay to taste. Juicy, round, rich. Hello, hi. I'm Chip Handshake, and then five minutes after the conversation, you've lost, you've run out of things to say. Feels like a bit of one of those wines. So um, don't, uh, yeah, fine to fine if you want a glass of something, but not if you want a couple. So from Bobal to Tempranillo, I don't know. We've got other grapes in there apart from Tempranillo, um, but um, no, it says 100% Tempranillo. This is Celeste. Criantha from Torres in Ribera del Duero. In Ribera del Duero, I think you're allowed, uh, it's got to be 75% um, Tempranillo or Tintofino as they call it here. Uh, Tintofino. I always get my Tintas and Tintos mixed up, but um, anyway, this is. But Celeste 2009. Well, the first one bounded out of its glass to say hello to you. This is much more laid back and uh, reticent even. It smells like there's quite a lot going on there. So I get this um, this character of classy oak. Um, there's this smokiness, there's this uh, ever so slight edge of dank cellar, which I don't mind in small amounts too much and it, it smells like something's gone wrong with the wine. But it, it, there's a feel of that. There's a feel of um, a, a wine that has not been overripe in the first place uh, and is gently coming out of its sojourn in the cellar. Uh, I don't know how long. Criantha has probably been in, in barrel for uh, at least a year, but probably not two years. And uh, yeah, it, it feels like a wine that is still doing its uncurling. Uh, I've got a feeling that, uh, yeah, come, uh, well, we're on half past two now, uh, come seven, eight o'clock this evening, it will have unfurled more. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick the, keep the cork in and try it tomorrow and, and see where it's going. Because at the moment, it, yeah, it feels... Uh, Tight, tight, tightly wound. I haven't tasted it yet. I better do that. It's got this warm, spicy, juicy, plummy generosity. Um, what I like about it compared with quite a few uh, Ribera del Dueros is it doesn't feel like they've overripened the fruit. There's none of that, um, what I call the skinny, dark, roasted character that shows that the fruit was left out that little bit too long and the grapes started to shrivel. Here, Yes, it's ripe. Yes, it's full. But um, there's still a little bit of, uh, of earthy freshness to it. And uh, I was saying about that ever so slightly dank edge. I've got a feeling that that's actually in the fruit uh, rather than the uh, rather than the barrels. There's this uh, yeah, the earthiness and smokiness. It feels like it's it's, it's to do with the soil rather than uh, uh, rather than the elevage. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on that because uh, I think that there is uh, an even better wine to come out of its shell than is showing now. It looks good, but um, yeah, come come tomorrow evening. Let's see whether this one is a wine for now or wine for tomorrow or wine for never. It's Mass Oler Blau. 
don't know what's blue about it, but um, 2009, uh, from, made from Sira e Garnacha, and it's from a place called Emporda. Um, Emporda probably doesn't mean anything to most people, but uh, Costa Brava probably will. Um, the uh, Costa Brava, uh, this is, the Emporda is the wine region there, so we're just over the border from France, and um, uh, when you're not slumming it on the beach, go inside and uh, there's some rather, go in, in, inland and there's some rather decent wineries there. Let's see if this is one of them. So the Syrah and Garnacha blend, that's what you think of as being cut your own. Uh, but here, it's got some of that roan meatiness, but it's got that dusty Spanish warmth about it. It's, fun it's funny when you taste Garnacha from, uh, uh, from this part of Spain and from the, the southern Rhone. I always find that there's a, a, like a dusty roof tile edge um, to, the, to the Spanish ones. There's also a little touch of volatility there, which is lifting the flavours. Little touch of it, good interesting too much and it turns into vinegar but here i think they've just about got it right it's a warm rich rounded inky style um it's big but um what i like about it is it's not big and massively fruity yes there's the fruit there but it's the, uh, it's this more this spicy undercurrent and earthiness that uh, tells it you can tell these the grapes have been grown somewhere rather than in a grape factory, if you want to call it that, uh, they, 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 it tastes of a place. It tastes of warmth and dustiness, and uh, yes, you you almost like you you, you can smell the uh, smell the hot Spanish air in in, in this wine. Um, not the most subtle of wine, but honest, juicy, tasty, uh, friendly. Bring out the Murgis sausages. Drink a stein of this, and um, and enjoy yourself, but not on the beach. We like that. We like that a lot. Okay, the final, final two. Uh, we are from adjacent appellations here, aren't we? Or DOs or whatever they're called. Uh, one is Carniena, but the first one we've got is Calatayud. And uh, these are in the north east of Spain, so if you imagine travelling uh, slightly, yeah, slightly east from Rioja, maybe even a little bit further north, and uh, main grape in both of them is, is Garnacha, but I think it says on the back of this one, uh, actually, I'd better tell you what it is first. 2009 Espiago um, from Calatayud. Um, and uh, it doesn't actually say what the blend is, but it says they grow Tempranillo, Sierra, Merlot, Garnacha, and Cabernet Sauvignon. So as for what's in here, I can't tell you from that. I was talking about volatility on the previous one. I did get a little touch of it here. Uh, so there's the warm, juicy, uh, again, that dusty fruit character. Um, there, so there's plumminess. There's also, I, it feels like you can, uh, there's something of the Bordeaux grapes here, there's something of that, bl that black currant rather than the, uh, the plummy berry character. Um, it feels like it's going to be a, another rich, warm wine, maybe not as um, spicy and classy as the one before, but rich and honest. Let's have a see. I almost missed some of that spicy warmth of the previous one. Um, here, the, the, you can feel that, the, that there is some ripe, um, there's some ripe Bordeaux varieties in here, and it's giving this rounded blackberry um, stroke, black currant character. Uh, but uh, it feels like it's not got as much soul as the one before. It feels I, I was talking about the previous one tasting like it came from a place. This is much more on that. Um, there's, I don't find much of a sense of place. I find a reasonably made wine, juicy, friendly, red, but um, don't know how long I could end up talking with that, whereas the previous one I could probably spend uh, some rather raucous nights with. Let's see whether we can say that, that about the last one, which is Don Diego Escolano uh, Reserva 2007, uh, and this is Carignana, so as I say, next door to Calasayud. The other um, region in this area is Campo de Borja, again, Garnacho is a dominant one in all three. Uh, but don't know what the great varieties are here. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Bit of a lounge lizard, this one. Uh, it smells like it's uh, it's it's a little bit. Uh, it, it's got some some naughty stories from its past. It's two years older than, or I think, all the rest of them are 2009. This is 2007, and it feels like yeah, a small town hoochie coochie man. Um, it's got uh, juiciness. It's got ripeness. It, but it's not got huge subtlety. Um, it feels like it's going to be ripe and friendly, and uh, it's going to have a little bit of the berries, the, the the red berries, the dark berries as well, and the, some of that coconutty oak that we getting on, on the first one, um, two years older, so it's not quite as, uh, as dominant as it was on the first one, but um, yeah, it feels like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting, but not something you want to stay with for too long, but I could be wrong, let's have a see. It's okay, yeah, uh, and it's not quite as juicy as I thought it was going to be. The fin I find the finish is a little bit dry. Um, there is this um, vanilla, there's the strawberry, there's the, the, the blackberry, 
there's a bit of the dustiness uh, and um, certainly no one's going to complain about having a glass of that uh, but it's a sort of wine that if you if you are if you if you wanted to go somewhere on holiday this would be the place you stayed for one night and then you moved on to somewhere a little bit more interesting maybe the Costa Brava actually the Costa Brava one for me is the one that stands out here I think that the uh, the Torres Ribera del Duero will come out of its shell but I don't know if it's ever going to have quite the same earthy, grotty, gristy, wonderful personality of the Massolaire. That was uh, that was tasty wine. So I think tonight, when I dig out whatever I'm having, uh, it had better be red and it had better be meaty, and um, I'll have quite a bit of that. See you soon.